Well, hello. Uh, I was trying to do some academic reading because I got some emails from you, Vic, about my exciting funding, and I was like, oh yeah, I need to start thinking about my master's thesis again. Why not? And then I picked up this book that I was really excited about called The Failure of Gothic, and I was reading the first chapter, which claimed to be about the mysteries of Udolpho, and I kept referring to the castle of Wolfenbach, and I kept, like, just barely realizing and skipping the paragraph in time to not be spoiled, uh, but I came to the conclusion that I, I it's not safe to read that book. I'm going to have to read a different book uh, for my serious reading until we have finished this. Uh, and so then I also thought it would be a good idea to finish this. So I will do my next 10 minute chunk. I'm sorry that Matilda is not a very good person. She doesn't have a lot of options to rescue her still mysteriously nameless attic friend. She, for example, doesn't know her attic friend's name. But uh, let's see. Let's see what happens while she's hiding in the house, waiting for this letter from the uh, suspiciously French sister. The following morning after breakfast, she repaired to the library. Ah, thought she, what transport if I should find the dear lady returned. But no such happiness awaited her. She entered the apartments with a beating heart and remained near ten minutes in the library before Joseph made his appearance. Well, Joseph, said she hastily on his entering the room, how are things below stairs? All the same as they were yesterday, madam. The doors were fast and everything as I left them. I have a very great desire, said she, to see that room where the inscriptions are, and which I find is locked up. Can you open it? Yes, I can. The key is below. But if I may speak my mind, I think you had better not go. Oh, the inscription's written in blood. No, we want to go. Why so? demanded she. Why? Because, to my thinking, it's a dismal place, and will put me in mind of sad doings. You make me more curious. Pray indulge me, Joseph. Well, madam, I'll go with you, but tis sore against my mind. He went down and soon returned with two keys, but with evident reluctance in his countenance. I believe one of these is the key, said he. There used to hang three upon the peg. The other is gone, or left in the closet door, perhaps, yet. I don't think my lady ever came up to open these rooms. Whilst he was talking, he was trying the keys. Neither of them would open the first door. The second he unlocked presently. Oh, I see, in a row. They entered. It was a dressing room, handsomely furnished. They tried the door, which opened into the other room. It was fastened on the inside. This is very strange, said Joseph. I will go down again and see if I can find the other key, if you are not afraid to stay alone. Not in the least, said Matilda, who was examining the room very carefully. The windows were very high and grated with bars of iron. The hangings were dark green d damask. I, I should know how to say that word by now dark green damask, everything was handsome, yet the grated windows made it appear gloomy. Joseph now returned with a countenance of horror and dismay. Oh, my lady, I can find no key, but looking about the kitchen, behind the door I found a large knife, all over blood. <gasps> Gracious heaven, cried Matilda, what is it you tell me? I tremble with apprehension. Let us force that door, at all events. We... <laughs> I intend it, answered jo Joseph, and have brought a bar with me for the purpose. We're just ignoring the bloody knife in the kitchen? The door in the dressing room being the slightest, after a great good deal of labor, the old man burst it open. What a scene presented itself! A woman on the bed, weltering in blood! Both uttered a cry of horror, horror and ran to the bed! It was the elderly attendant of the lady! dead by a wound in her throat. I don't think I've ever actually found a dead body in a gothic novel before. Oh, oh. The sight was too much for poor Matilda. She sunk fainting into a chair. Joseph was frightened out of his wits. He flew down as fast as possible and returned with water. He bathed her face and hands and she revived. Oh, Joseph, cried she, the lady, the dear lady. What has become of her in such bloody hands? The Lord only knows, answered he, looking with terror towards the closet. Directed by his eye, Matilda arose and walked to the door. The key was in it. 
She unlocked it and was about to enter, when casting her eyes on the floor, she saw it was all over stained with blood, dried into the floor. She started and involuntarily retreated, but Joseph, who had looked round, said, "'You may enter, madam. Nothing is here.' With trembling steps, she entered the closet, her heart beating with terror. It was a large, light closet, with a very high window, grated like the other, hung with dark green stuff, two stools covered with the same, and a large wardrobe in it. Maybe I should explain, closets used to not just be tiny rooms for clothes, but they were like tiny rooms that you would go and like read in, and maybe also have a wardrobe with your clothes in it, apparently. I've never seen a wardrobe in a closet before, but okay. On the floor was plainly marked the shape of a hand and fingers traced in blood, which seemed to have flowed in great quantities. Good heavens, cried she, some person was doubtless murdered here, too. Intent, <laughs> she's so heartless, intended to have been murdered, answered Joseph, wiping his eyes. But she, thank God she escaped then. He said no more. Matilda, extremely terrified, hastened out of the closet, when the poor creature on the bed met her eyes. "'Oh, Joseph!' exclaimed she, turning with horror from the scene. "'What is to be done with this unfortunate woman?' "'Dear my lady, I can't tell. "'I have neither strength to dig a grave, nor can I carry her down.' "'It is plain,' said Matilda. "'The wretches who, is, who have carried off the lady murdered the servant. "'Prevent discovery.' "'I fear,' cried Joseph, "'my turn will be next. "'My mouth will be stopped from the same fear.' "'God forbid,' said Matilda.' But as I have now no hopes of finding the lady, and it will be dangerous to entrust another person with the secret, I think, Joseph, if we can find a small... Okay, they're not going to hide the body in the chest, but... If we can find a small trunk or chest, to fill it with the linen and necessaries your lady offered me, and convey it to one of the rooms in the other ring, wing, I will write a line and leave it on the table. Yet, on second thought, it will be useless should she escape. She can never think of coming here again. We will therefore lock and bolt up every door. You can take the keys of the places below to your own kitchen, and now and then come through the passage to see if all is safe. Poor Joseph, with a heavy heart, agreed to this. So she's worried about borrowing the clothes without leaving a note, and not. And, but she's going to leave the body there? <sighs> They had now stayed some time and thought it best to separate and meet again after dinner. They gladly left these horrid rooms and returned by different ways to their own habitation. When Matilda came to her apartment, the terror of her mind was unspeakable. All she had seen, all she had heard, crowded upon her remembrance and gave her the most horrible ideas. She could not think Joseph's fears unreasonable if he was supposed to be in the secret. His life was not safe. And in, his, and in his fate the whole family might be involved. "'What can I, what ought I to do?' cried she, shedding a torrent of tears. "'No friend to advise me, no certainty of a place to receive me if I go from hence, and, and a probability that, if I stay, I might be murdered. What a dreadful alternative is mine!' After giving free vent to her tears, she endeavored to compose her mind by addressing the Almighty Power to protect her. Sweet are the consolations which religion affords in all our difficulties and distresses when supplicating the supreme being with fervor and a perfect reliance on his goodness we feel a resignation and confidence that enable us to support present evils and look forward with hope to happier days such were the feelings of matilda she rose from her knees with serenity she recovered resolution and firmness I will not despair, said she. The Almighty will preserve a friendless orphan, unconscious of guilt, that relies on his protection. She dried up her tears and met the family as usual. When dinner was over, she returned to the library. Joseph soon joined her. They went down to the deserted parlor. Matilda could not help shuddering. Joseph found a trunk, the drawers were opened, and she took out such necessaries of every kind as she thought she, might, she must want yet left plenty behind. In one drawer she found a purse with a good deal of money in it. Here she, he here she hesitated. The lady had told her she would supply her, yet she knew not to what amount. Joseph persuaded her to take the whole. Be assured, madam, my dear lady will never return, cried he. 
After much hesitation and reluctance, she at length divided it, and then, taking a pen and ink, she took an inventory of the clothes and money, with an acknowledgment to repay it when able, and locked it in the drawer with the purse. Having packed up those few things she had selected, and requested Joseph would take it, by and by, to a room near hers, she said, I cannot be easy under the idea that the poor woman above should lie there to decay. Is there no way to place her in a decent manner? After some pause, Joseph said, There is a large... Oh, God, we all... Oh, God! There is a large chest in the back kitchen with old trumpery in it. If I take them out, perhaps we might get the body there. But I fear I have not strength to bring it down. Let us see the chest first, replied Matilda, and then we will consider of the other. Of the other. She followed him into the back kitchen, saw the chest, and its contents were soon tumbled into one corner. Now, Joseph, said she, I will assist you to bring the body down. You, my lady, cried he, staring at her. Yes, rejoined she, let us go up. She led the way, and he followed. Having unlocked and entered the room, she could not help shuddering, yet took more observation of the gloomy apartment than she had been enabled to do in the morning. And recollecting what she had heard about inscriptions, she got upon a chair, and from thence to a kind of window seat very high from the ground. Standing on this, she examined the window. It looked out towards a sort of battlement. Uh, I will finish the sentence. It looked out towards a sort of battlement, which surrounded the back part of the castle. The north wind blew full upon it. The only prospects were the walls and the distant mountains. Okay. So next time you'll Google uh, walls and distant mountains to start with the next sentence and find out what the inscription written in blood says. But oh, a body and Matilda's so terrible. Matilda, like, thinks it's important that she not impose too much on the kindness of, like, borrowing the belongings of mysterious attic lady, who is clearly never returning because she's been kidnapped by murderers. This is not... These are not reasonable priorities. And she's like, we shouldn't leave the body just rotting on the bed. Like, but you are going to leave the purse. And, uh, and so they're going to put the body in a chest, but then she can't even remember that that's the task she's in the middle of. She just gets distracted by, oh, yeah, I came in here because I wanted to read what the gory, bloody inscription said. <sighs> it's very difficult for me to stop reading right now. Uh, I think maybe I've had too much time alone in my apartment today cleaning everything after like an entire month of letting mess accumulate. Uh, I hope that you are not too tired from work because I want you to read the next part as quickly as possible. Um, it was really good to be able to see your face last time so I hope you continue to do well and tell me what this inscription says. <sighs> All right, goodbye darling.